we've got the scale on. Um, one cool feature that I like about this is if you really want to get down to brass tacks on measuring, you can add a tear. So this does add just a little bit of weight, as you guys can see. Uh, it's about four grams or four and a half grams. So if you add that in as a tear, it zeroes that out. Now there's no, well, maybe the plastic was heavier on one cup than another cup. Uh, now you have all of your measurements consistent. And if you really want to go crazy, see, now there's a difference in that one. So this one is a little bit heavier. <laughs> it's not it's not that big of a deal. But just in case you were wondering, yeah, I use that as a tear. Um, T A R E is, and it's just for it's like when you go to the deli, and the bag has a little bit of a weight to it, and if they put paper between the cheese, that kind of thing. So we're using Amazon basic old washable school glue as part of the pouring medium. And I always add my, for some reason, I don't know why, a lot of people add paint first and then they add the glue onto that or they're, if they're using Floetrol or anything else, um, they'll do paint first. But we're, I always do glue first because that's my biggest quantity. And we're just going to run it to right around 100 grams. went over by quite a bit got away from me that's all right I can dump some of it off never a problem there down to 103 that's close enough I'm not gonna sweat three grams and we'll do the same thing in the next one I'll try and be a little bit more mindful of how fast this is coming out for me if you guys don't want to watch all this stuff, because it can be kind of like boring watching paint dry, you can fast forward. I'm not going to be mad at you. I've slowed down a little bit because I don't... That's close. So I don't want to go crazy on this. Get too much. There we go. That's a zero out if I ever saw one myself. slow it down when it hits like 75 there we go and for the white as well And I know this is going to be too much for one, so I'll probably do a couple of paintings today. A couple of pours. Interrupted by a robocall. Sorry about that. Um, actually made me spill some glue. That's all right. Um, really don't care about that all too much. I, what I was saying in the process of doing these pours is about all the brain power I have in my head today. I'm just stupid tired. Um, but we're gonna make we're gonna make a, a good go of this and have some fun with it. And I'm excited about doing this one. It's gonna be a almost an ocean style pour. I might add a little bit of um, turquoise into this as well. And last but not least, no, you guys didn't see all of that on camera, but I'm gonna bring it back in and show you guys. There we go. It's um, Simply White Liquitex Basics on these three, and you can see it's just over by a gram, but that's not going to break the bank. So Liquitex Basics, these three colors, and then on my Light Turquoise, it's a little heavy on that, but that's because it's a much thinner paint, and that is our Key West, which is an apple barrel paint. So those are our colors today. We're going to do 
and ocean pour. And before we get started on the new painting, I know that this type of audience loves to see the dry paintings from before. So I just wanted to pop that in there and show you that there's been really no breakdown or fade of color, even though a lot of folks have trouble keeping that kind of integrity in the colors with apple barrel paints. Definitely with folk, uh, folk art, I, I do not use folk art, but on occasion when they have a good, uh, good sale, but um, yeah, I'm super happy. This is this is very 1960s. This is Janis Joplin, shagadelic kind of. You know, this would be a great backdrop at a Doors concert, I think. So, yeah, baby. And just just a couple others to, as I was unlocking the code that works for me, and I know it's different for every artist out there. So my code might not be your code, but it works for me. So. Um, this is another one that I've recently done, also dry, holding its integrity. And this is Master's Touch Paints, which I think is like the generic Michaels Hobby Lobby type deal. Love orange and blue against one another. That makes for a pretty cool painting. And then the other one, which the cells aren't as consistent but it's still really super cool is this one and again both of these are going to be available once I get everything the, the shop at Etsy is open and I'll leave you the trailer and the link you guys want to check that out and you can always help me provide uh, continual teaching both this and in the airbrushing world, which is primarily what I do for a living. I'm an airbrush artist um, that crosses over. Artists are artists. Um, if you have a creative mind and you appreciate the arts and you want to help me continue to be able to get supplies for my students and my subscribers and teach you guys, which is what I love to do, you are welcome to help me out. Go find that Patreon in the description below. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Through the beauty of time lapse, I will spare you guys the process of watching me do this in real time. I have mixed all of my paints up. I've got a consistency that I'm comfortable with. And just to give you guys an example of what this is gonna look like, I'll let this sit for just a little bit off camera because I've got a few air bubbles that I need to come out. But I think the green is gonna be able to show you the best consistency. We don't quite have a pyramid in this, but we definitely have a mound on a mound. Lots of really good creamy ribbons. That's what you want to see. I have not added any treadmill 100% silicone to this. I have a lot of paint in these cups. I'm going to be doing a couple, if not several, pours with this particular setup here. So I'm going to do three drops in the lime green, Naples yellow, and Prussian blue. The Key West is a much thinner, softer bodied paint, so I'm only going to do a couple of drops in that. I'm going to have no drops in the white. All right, folks, I think we're ready. I've got all the paint set off to the side. Let's see how this is going to work out. see what we got. I'm doing this on the edges. 
just to help it slide off, but there, I mean, there's going to be enough paint. I think we'll be okay regardless of what we do. But this is definitely filling up the canvas quickly. And I should be able to get this to slide right off. Almost looks like Mother Earth. So I'm going to let it settle and do what it does. I've got some really cool rings coming up in the center. Almost looks celestial. Pluto even. Or a planet, the way it's round. Who knows? This is cool, y'all. It's setting up real good again. I've got a heavy paint load in the middle, which I knew I was going to have, because it's a lot of paint. still have a lot of paint left over that I haven't even touched yet, which will be in a different pour. I kind of mixed up the order in which I was layering in the cup. I've got some blue cells popping up, some yellow cells popping up. All of my colors that I've employed in this are coming up randomly at a different location. Let's go ahead and use our little catcher. Bring that back. Slide that off, bring it back. Cells are kind of keeping their content. Bring this down here. Oh, come on now. Don't want to lose too much of this. Although I do love the stretching process and I really love what's happening in this corner now. I can leave that alone, bring this back to center. we've got. My flame is dying down on this, so it's not going to be, wow, I'm popping some air bubbles. I might not even need to do a whole lot. how that grows. Um, this reminds me of looking through crystal clear water at pebbles. So I think that maybe we have achieved the, the Mediterranean success that I was looking for in honor of the Naples yellow that's being used in this pour today. Yeah, so I think I'm going to find a really cool beach and name it after that. Wow, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, you guys. What do you think? Leave me some comments. Tell me what your thoughts are on this. See, for me, this is just a really great break from spraying. It allows me to be creative and it takes my mind off of stuff. And they're just they're just cool this is a really cool way to be constructive and creative with acrylics 
Let's see, some of these cells are really opening up. And I've got cells coming up within these cells over here. That's okay, too. It looks like I've got some blue veins on this side, which there is no, this is not a color. This, the, that's the cool thing, y'all, is that they create their own colors as we go. When we layer in the cup, once I'm doing that, these are just going to pop up however they want to pop up. So you can definitely see the Key West. You can see the Naples in there. That's consistent. The lime green stayed consistent, and there's still some solid Prussian blue. The white is still white up in the corner, and we've got some white cells that have formed in various spots that are true to their colors. So it hasn't gotten muddy on me, but it has also created a couple of, if not three or four, different shades of different colors just combining and that's one thing that may be tricky for you guys is figuring out what colors you want to work together um, I love stark opposites like I love the red and light blue or an orange and a dark blue and a white those are really good um, purples usually go pretty well with greens and blues and yellows and then these colors are just think about what kind of shades you would see in a creek a very clear running quick moving late summer creek that you're sitting next to or think about the ocean think about being at the beach not the not the mid-atlantic though because that's a real muddy water type deal it's maybe the pacific or australia or new zealand or in this case off the coast of italy somewhere let's start you guys with the inside of the cup Everybody always asks me what that looks like when I'm done flipping it. It's cool. Sometimes you get real lucky. This is one of those real lucky paintings. Oh. So when you see stuff like this, just go ahead and correct it. That's not going to hurt anything just by touching it with your finger. You want paint all the way on your corners but you want to try and stay consistent with the paint that's spilled over so if you have a, a spot like I have another one here there we go and now you just want to kind of walk around your edges and then we're gonna scrape I'm not gonna do all the scrapes and stuff with you guys because I don't think that that's necessary but just make sure all your corners that your paints covered everything and that's actually white the way white has come off so I'm not gonna mess with that um, looks like I'm good all the way down here just one little spot there but here we go this is what we got today kids looks like I've still got some cells coming up through right there this totally it even looks like i've got a little tiny shade of purple going on right through here oh yeah i'm digging it definitely going to pick a beach to name this one somewhere on the coast of italy maybe i'll employ my dear friend melissa she lives over there to give me a hand with naming this one